Hey, uh, real quick, before I jump into today's message, I want to show you a uh, real quick video. Gwen, you got that? Jesse's story, uh, because you, you may be sitting in that spot too, is that Jesse uh, grew up Catholic? No, Methodist. Methodist. And so he was he was sprinkled as a baby, and so he came to me and said, look, I've been listening to you preach, I've been hearing you talk about baptism, I want to give my life to Jesus, be buried in the waters of baptism, raised to walk in newness of life, like Romans chapter 6 says, and so uh, that's exactly what we did, and so uh, here, here's the thing, man, it, what that tells me is that even in the midst of everything going on, God is still in control and God is still working. God is still doing miracles all around us. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm ready. I'm going to jump into this. You ready? All right, let me, I'm going to pray real quick and I'm going to get in. God, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Father, I pray that you would just, uh, that you would speak through me. Uh, Father, that you, your word would speak boldly. And uh, Father, I pray right now that uh, you, you would give everyone in this room and listening online um, ears to hear and not only just learn but uh, to apply to our lives father I pray that you would uh, take me out of the way God don't let me get in the way of your word right now so in Christ we pray amen amen uh, let me tell you this uh, we're continuing our series go looking at the greatest of all time we're in the book of Mark uh, and that's where our core verses from. I'll get there here in just a little bit. Uh, but like I told you last week, Mark's kind of got this hands-on experience with Jesus. And he's had a couple of failures in his life. And he, he's just getting really into life. And, and so because Mark is real, we get this beautiful picture of who Jesus is and what he's doing and all those types of things as he continues uh, to go through the life of Christ. How many of you feel like you get enough sleep? Online, maybe you, if you're online, you might still be asleep. How <laughs> I many get enough sleep? Not enough sleep. Okay, this is this is what the American Academy of Sleep Medicine says. Sleep Research Society recommended that adults 18 to 60 years uh, get at least seven hours of sleep each night to promote optimal health. Now listen to this. This right here was, was life-changing for me. Sleeping less than seven hours per day is associated with an increased risk of developing chronic conditions such as obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and frequent mental distress. I came to, I'm not fat. I just have a sleeping disorder. <laughs> As a nation, we're not getting enough sleep, said Wayne Giles, director of CDC's Division on Population Health. Lifestyle changes such as going to bed at the same time each night, uh, waking up at the same time each morning, taking, uh, turning off or removing all the TVs and tablets and phones and all those things that we have to distract us in our bedroom, those will promote better sleeping habits. Now, how many of you get at least seven hours of sleep a night a few of you less than seven hours Courtney was here in the first service and uh she, she she didn't raise her hand for more than seven hours but i made sure that everyone knew that she does get more if she adds up her naps and stuff <laughs> it, it goes over that seven hour mark I, I believe that most of us are running on empty Tell me if any of this sounds like your normal, everyday life routine. We get up early in the morning to get ready for work. We get the kids up and fed, ready for school or virtual learning. We race out of the house 
to make it just to sit in line at Starbucks before rushing into work, right before we're supposed to be there. We get to work and our inboxes and text messages are already filling up. The stacks of paperwork and things that are to be done on our desk continues to grow uh, despite everything that we do. We stay at work later and later trying to empty all those files and inboxes and text messages, which never happens. We rush home to take the kids to 10 events or practices they may or may not want to participate in. Then we have to run by the grocery store because we haven't taken time to even plan what might be for dinner or probably a better option would be just to order Domino's again. We get everyone dinner, we get everyone a bath, we go to bed late to do it all again tomorrow. That sound familiar? What's a little frightening to me is probably the only downtime that you've had through your entire day was spent on useless social media. The only downtime you had in your entire day was spent on checking to see how everyone else's fake life was doing or making your own. Uh-oh, that'll preach a little bit. We'll get, it, we'll get it hot again here in a minute. Start sweating up here like I did last service. Folks, we need rest. Rest allows us to be our best. Mark chapter 2. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now, what does Sabbath mean? Sabbath was observed by the Jews who would, uh, where they would abstain from work. Basically, they would start on Friday evening and they wouldn't do any work until Saturday evening. Uh, the basic idea of taking a Sabbath was to take a rest. God created rest for us because we need it. I think the cool thing is that Jesus is Lord of rest. I want to take the word rest and just use that to show us some teaching points from Scripture this morning. Let's start with the R in rest. Refresh. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right past for his name's sake. The Lord is our shepherd. He refreshes our soul. And, and I know if you're, if you're watching online, you're thinking, man, we're tired of being at home and, and we need being refreshed. And, and that's why a lot of you have come back because you, you need being refreshed. But I, I think that we could use a little bit more refreshing than just on Sunday. I think it's true for our physical lives, but very true for our spiritual lives as well. Let me ask you this. Does your heart hurt for the things that hurt God's heart? Do the desires of God motivate you? If that's true, especially in the time that we're in, you probably feel beaten down and burdened by everything that's going on. If we love God and we desire to serve him, we long to see people of every tongue, every tribe, every nation, every race know who Jesus is. I don't know about you, but yeah, what you see in our world today is not a whole lot of love. breaks my heart. We don't have a political problem. We don't have a race problem. We, we've got a problem where people 
don't know the powerful name of Jesus. Jesus is secure to everything we see going on around us. And we should, we should feel burdened by the fact that people don't know him. And Jesus says, look, when you feel that burden, I'm here to refresh your soul. Kind of like a cold shower after cutting the grass in 100 degree heat. Anybody do that? I mean, I'll, I'll jump right in there, 10 degrees. I need that. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Folks, we need God's word. We need to be refreshed by it. E. God says, I'm here to provide ease for you. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you what? Rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The idea of ease is it's the freedom from labor, freedom from pain, freedom from physical annoyance or exhaustion. We need to rest in the Lord. Well, hopefully our hearts break for the things that break God's heart. The thought of God being in control should ease our burden. Listen, at the end of the day, it's our job to share the good news about Jesus. It's our job to serve our neighbors and our communities and our co-workers and people around us, Jesus. It's our job to have a, a burden where we want to share Christ with everyone we come in contact with. First Corinthians chapter three, verse six, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but who God made it grow. That eases my burden and it should ease your burden as well. S, I think sometimes we just need a time of stillness. Psalm 46, 10. But he, said, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Sometimes we just need to be still. We need a time of no action. We just need a place where we sit and allow God to be God. That's one of the things I really enjoy uh, about hunting. Is that it gives you the opportunity to be out in the woods and just... Be still. While I'm hunting, I spend a lot of time just praying and reflecting on what God would desire me to teach, to say, to preach, to pray. It, it gives me a chance just to shut up and listen. Maybe all of our relationships with God could use a little time where we just shut up and listen. Kind of like any relationship, but if one person who does all the talking, how's that other person feel? Beat up, burdened. Psalm chapter 27, verse 14 says, Wait. For the Lord be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. This, uh, this next statement is tweetable. Uh, so if you've got Twitter, this is tweetable. And you watch it online, you want to post it, just make sure I get credit. Maybe, just maybe, God can teach us more in our stillness than in our movement. 
maybe God can teach us more in our stillness and in our mind. Lastly, we need a place of tranquility. Psalm 131, verse 2. But I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. I, I want you to just close your eyes for just a moment. And if you're watching online, just sit still for just a moment. And I want you just to look at this picture that David paints so vividly for us this morning. But I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with his mother, like a weaned child. I am content. This picture that David paints is this beautiful picture of, of a mother with a small child, an infant. Pulled up close in her arms and pulled quite tightly to her chest. And in that moment, in that picture that David paints of a, of a mother just holding her child, you can just see contentment and peace and calm and tranquility on the face of that child. That's what God wants to do for us. With chaos and confusion, we all need a tranquil space. And that tranquil space is with Jesus. Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We find tranquility. We find that place of calm. We find that spot of just being at peace as Jesus takes us into his arms, holds us tightly into his arms, close against his chest, and just whispers that he loves us. got to be doing this. You got to be going there. You got to be doing this. You got to be here. You got to be there. When's the last time you just rested in who God is? If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you've never been baptized like we saw Jesse earlier, and you're wondering why your world's in chaos and confusion and, and all that. It's because the only place you're going to find rest is in the arms of Christ. We want you to experience that rest. And if you're watching, you're joining us online, man, hit that connect tab and just tell us you'd love to be talking to someone about who Christ is. If you're here today, and you want to know who Jesus is on a personal level. You want to experience that rest. We'd love to have that conversation with you before you leave. For the rest of us who know and have experienced the rest that only comes through Christ, praise seems going to come, and we're going to stand together. Go ahead, we're going to stand together. Go ahead, stand up. We're going to stand together. And we're going to worship God 
right now through song. And while we do that, I, I just want you to know that I'm praying that in this next few moments, that this would be the beginning to a brand new week of rest for you. I, I pray that you'll take the next few moments as we sing and worship together, that you will lean back into the loving arms of God. And you just allow him to grab you closely, and hold you tightly, and let you experience the rest and the peace that passes all understanding that only he can.